Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is connections with circular hollow sections in RFM6. My name is Andreas Hörold. I am responsible for marketing and public relations in the Global Software Company. For instance, the content of the website, uh, German and English webinars, customer projects, newsletters, and so on. I will be the moderator today and I will also present the webinar. I will be supported by my two colleagues and they can introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Walter Fröhlich. Um, at Lubal, I'm responsible for the customer support by email and phone. Um, furthermore, I'm a member in our development team uh, for the add on steel joints. Today, um, I will answer to your questions. Hello, my name is Lukas. I work for Lubal for 12 years now. I'm usually in the interface department trying to develop things there, um, but I'm also um, in the customer support, active in the customer support, and today I will answer the questions together with Walter. Okay, thank you for your introduction. Maybe in additional information, Walter and me, we are in the company for 30, about 30 years, 13 years. Uh, okay, then we can switch off our webcams so that the attendees can see the full screen. I see some words, how you can ask questions, at least for the attendees who participate the first time. On the right side of your screen, you can see the control panel. You can show that with that arrow here, and then you can enter a question here. And yeah, my two colleagues will answer you. If you don't get an answer during the webinar because there are too many, for example, then you will get an email afterwards. The other way is to watch the entire webinar and then email questions to info at global.com. Okay, then we come to the agenda today. At first, I will model a simple end plate connection that you can see on the right side. Then I continue with a hidden connection. Then an end plate connection with stiffness. And I will utilize the auxiliary solid component. Now that's quite new. And I would like to show you how you can handle this component and what it is for. Okay, then I will start with the first connection. That's today's model. I will model all uh, connections in that model. It's a steel frame yeah, with triangular uh, truss girders and those are all, all the members are circular hollow sections. Let's take a look at the results of the ultimate limit state. You can see the main uh, internal forces are normal forces. We've got also MY and MZ. But yeah, that doesn't matter for steel joints. You can consider all internal forces in such a connection or in all connections. Okay, then I switch off the results. I can click on the, or right click on the first node and I can create a new steel joints. The other way is to go to the navigator data and open types for drill steel joints and open with a right click the context menu and then new steel joints. Both ways are possible. First, I select the node, that node. Okay. So, ultimate configuration, standard, members, next dialog. Yeah, at least one member should be or must be supported. And we turn to the components and I add the first component, the plate to plate, this one. So member one 
and member two. Okay, let's zoom a little bit in. It's at the moment it's rectangular, but we want yeah to create a rounded plate, and we will do that in the next steps. So thickness of ten millimeters is okay, but I will increase the size. Eighty, eighty on all sides. So, and the current dimensions are four hundred by four hundred millimeters. Because I will arrange the bolts in a round order, I will enter here zero we do that with a yeah, later uh, component okay the weld yeah default setting is filled weld front side that's okay and i enter five millimeters okay that's the first component now we want to cut the plate round. So that's why we use the plate editor. Uh, this one, plate editor. So plate to, to modify, plate to plate one, plate one, and with a rounding. So and I only have to enter the radius, it's the half of the plate dimension, 200 millimeters. So this is this side. Ah, that's all. So I copy that component for the other plate by right click, copy component at end. So and I have to assign the plate number two. Okay, that's all for the plate and the welds. And now we add the fasteners. Right at the bottom, you can see the fasteners. Okay. The fasteners should be on the plate. And plate to plate one. And the other side, plate, plate to plate two. Okay. So I only change the diameter to M16. Yeah, and I leave the strength grade as it is. And that's quite important. The pattern should be polar so that looks already quite good but we would like to assign not four bolts but eight bolts so we move it a little bit to the outside sorry that was a wrong click so not 133, but 160. Okay, the angel uh, between the bolts is uh, yeah, calculated automatically. I deselect the shear plane and thread because yeah, the shear plane, plane should be in the plates. Okay, that's all for yeah, this simple connection, connection number one. Then we create a next connection. Here left at the bottom, you can see create new joint. I have to assign the node. This one. You could also select more than one node. Yeah, that's up to you. So that's OK. 
Okay. Ultimate configuration, standard, members, okay. Components. Then we start with the first component, a cap plate. It's also quite new component. You can use it also for yeah, the top of the column. Uh, in our case, we used it you know, in, for a horizontal beam. Okay. Sifnet member should be member number one. Okay. And I only have to create an actual uh, displacement. I move it 100 millimeters in the yeah, left direction. So then the weld, but weld front side this time. Okay. It was created. So then plate editor, we would like to round that as well. Component plate editor. Yeah, we recognize the cap plate, but I would like to select rounding here and the diameter 120. Okay, and yeah, all corners. Oh, that looks already quite good. So then we do the same on the other side. That's why I select both components, do right click and copy components at the end. So then I have to assign the cap plate to member number two. Okay, and create or, uh, or assign also a weld, a butt weld front side. Okay, that's wrong. We want, doesn't want to rotate this. Why does that happen? I turn back to the cap plate number one. Okay, that's wrong. Don't want any rotation here. So then I insert a member in the gap. That's why I insert component inserted member. So. I open the library and you can insert all these members that are highlighted in blue. I select the cross shaped section with that parameters 240, 115, uh, sorry, next field, 230, 115, 10 and 10. Okay. So I have to modify the length 100 millimeters. That's the gap. So, and the origin should be member one. Okay. So uh, now that's the half of the gap and we fill the other side also with such an inserted member. That's why I copy that component at the end and assign it to the member number two. Okay. 
So then I create a, a plate in the middle. Next component, plate, this one. So dimensions are 240 by 240. So I rotate it 90 degrees. Okay. And I move it five millimeters in left direction. Okay. Now we would like you know, to round up the plate with the component plate editor. Plate to modify, plate one. Rounding. Uh, the same procedure as before, and 120 millimeters on all sides. Okay, then we copy the last two components for the other side. Copy components at the end. Plate two. The displacement should be minus five millimeters. Okay, that looks quite good. So, yeah, that's all. Now we do a member cut. Yeah, we would like to cut out this area here. So, the rounding. Let me check, rounding plate two. Okay, yeah. So now member cut. Left both the member cut. We would like to cut out the insert member one by plate, plate number one. Yeah, you can see that now it was cut out. I could also yeah, define the welds, but I do that with another nice uh, yeah, function or feature. And with the multi-selection of the welds, I would like to create all welds with one step. I will see that later. Okay, I copy the member cut that we cut out of this area here. So copy component set end, inserted member number two by play two. Okay. Now ah, that's all. That looks quite good now. Now we create the welds, as I already mentioned, with a multi-selection. I insert component welds, uh, sorry, that's this one. Yeah. Then member plate. And I select all these flanges and webs and so on. Okay, and the cap plate or oh. welds, yeah. Okay, so weld type is okay, double filled weld, five millimeters. Okay, and you can see now all welds are created with one steps, with one step. Okay, then only the fasteners are missing. So I open the component library, fasteners. So plate one 
and plate two. So I change only the diameter and we would like to define four boards. Now dimensions are well, okay, but I deselect the shear plane and thread. Okay, that's all the Hidden component or hidden connection is created. Yeah, in the praxis, where the yeah, hidden sheet about this connection, yeah, that is that the connection is really hidden. So now we create the third connection. I copy. We we use components from the first. Connection, I copy that. Uh, but modify the node. Uh, this node, I think, 102. Okay. Yeah, but we modify it a little bit. The plate should be a little bit larger. 100. Four times that we get dimensions of 440 by 440. So, okay. We also have to modify the rounding with the half of the diameter, radius 220 on both sides, 220. Okay. So we also have to modify the fasteners because we would like to add ribs here by zero degree and yeah, that would be uh, yeah, wrong when I select uh, or when I create the rip over the fastener. So that's why we changed the degree to 22.5 degrees. And also the radius, I, I move it a little bit to the outside. Okay, so now the rip uh, doesn't crash with the, with the board. So, okay, then we create such a rip with a plate. Uh, plate. The dimensions should be 150 by 90 on member number one. I move it 90 degrees. Okay, that looks already good, but we have to move it a little bit. So 85 and minus 160. Okay, now it is on the right position. Then we do plate cuts on this side and this side and this side. So I insert the plate cut. We would like to cut plate number one by plate and by plate to plate one. 
So, and I also create a weld, a double filled weld, four millimeters. Okay. We cut this side and created welds. We do the same for this side. Plate cut. Also plate number one, this time by member, by this member here, member one. So cutting method, uh, this time surface. And a weld of uh, double filled weld, four millimeters. Okay, now the last uh, plate cut on, uh, on this side, on the upper side. So, plate cut, plate number one. With No, that was wrong. I must use the plate at the door. Sorry. Plate at the door, this one. Plate one. Chamfer is okay. I have to enter the dimensions. 130 by 70. And only the corner number four. Okay. So the first uh, yeah, rib was created. Now we copy the four last components. Copy components at the end. And we need to modify only the plates. So the yeah the, the the displacements and the rotations one hundred sixty and two hundred seventy degrees. Yeah, we created this rep and the same procedure as before. Copy copy the component at the end. And we need to move plate three minus 160. Zero, zero. Okay. This one. Now the opposite side. Copy the last four components. At the end, then plate four, 160, zero and 180 degrees. Okay, four ribs are created and now I need to Copy the last 16 components at the end. Let me check if I selected all. Okay, yeah. Copy components at the end. So then plate number five, I have to change the parameters here, 113. Minus 113 and 135 degrees. Okay, this this one. Then number six. 113, 
serving 235. Uh, that's not correct. Ah, sorry, I did type typo. So, okay, that's correct. So then number seven. Minus one hundred thirteen. And forty five degrees. Okay, this one. So and now the last plate on this side. Minus one hundred thirteen. Thirteen and 315. Okay. Now all ribs on this side are created. And yeah, we can copy them to the other side and modify them. Yeah, but yeah, we skipped that. That's quite boring for you. I opened a new model where this already was created. So this is this one and you can see also the ribs on the other side. In the near future, we will create a new, you know, or we will modify a component that you can create the ribs on one side with one single component. Uh, I will. I hope it will be released in the next weeks or month. Uh, I hope that. And yeah, you can see this. The last steps were very uh, time-consuming, and it will be easier in the future. Okay, we finished the third component, uh, the third connection, and we continue with the last part of the webinar. That's already a prepared connection, and I would like to utilize the auxiliary solid component. Let me, yeah, this, uh, yeah, the, I would, I wouldn't like to display the our auxiliary plane. See, that's why I deselect them. So, and I create an auxiliary solid because my target is from, I would like to cut out this plate with a rounding and also on this side. And that's why I will use the auxiliary solid. Let me create it. You can find it here at the bottom, auxiliary solid. And you can define box, cylinder, or section. I use a section. Uh, I open the library. And you can use all yeah, cross section, cross sections from the library. And you can see that's, that those are all the components from the RFM library. And I would like to use the massive half over. So with those dimensions, 75 is the height and the width is 250 millimeters. Okay. So then the origin should be plate number one. Now this is plate number one. I have to rotate it 90 degrees. And now you can also display the coordinate system of the auxiliary solid or of the component, so 270. And I have to move it in Y direction, minus 66. Okay. 
So, and now we would like to cut all, uh, cut out all you know, what the auxiliary plane contains. Okay. So that's why we enter a plate cut. Plate number one by auxiliary solid. Okay, yeah, that's all. And when I undisplay the auxiliary solid, you can see, oh, sorry, the plate was cut out. So we copy that components at the end for the other plate. Auxiliary solid two is for plate number four. It's the opposite side. This side. Okay. And the plate cut should be also plate four by auxiliary solid two I on display. Uh, auxiliary solid, yeah, and you can see it was cut out correctly. Okay, yeah, you can use such auxiliary solid also on other places, for example, when you would like to create a hole in, in a web of an eye section, for example, when when you have an intersection because of a pipe or something like that, or yeah, imagine you have got a damage. Uh, I, I would like to show you how you can also use such an auxiliary solid for a cylinder on this example. Cylinder with a diameter of 50 millimeters. So I rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, now you can see it already. And I could also move it a little bit. Example, minus 100, uh, 120 millimeters. Also in set axis, 40 millimeters. Okay. So, and now we have to create a member cut to cut it out. So, member cut number one by auxiliary solid. Number three. So I deselect auxiliary solid three, and you can see the whole. Now, please uh, note that the auxiliary solid must be long enough. Yeah, if you. Now let's try that. If we short that a little bit, then where wouldn't be any cut. Okay. You must uh, yeah, define the intersection. So, okay. That was all, only an example. Yeah. Okay, that was the fourth uh, connection or yeah, the fourth, uh, fourth point of the webinar. Let's take a look at the results. Now we could yeah, calculate all now, but on my computer it would take yeah, more than five minutes. That's why I open an already calculated model with all components. 
you can see the results in the table below. Uh, at the moment, there are no joint models. I can select the simplified joint model. Where you can also see the colors of the yeah, design check ratio of the elements. Yeah, but quite better to see this uh, in the detailed joint model. Okay, oh, it's frozen. We have to wait a moment. Okay. Now it's a quite large model with all the components and members and with the results. Okay, and now you can see the design ratios you know, for the welds. On the lower side, you see the highest utilization of the welds. Well, let's take a look at another component. This component with the welds. This component. Okay, and you can see in the table the design ratio by design situation. We assigned the design situation number one to the steel joints design. We haven't gotten a good overview. What is the maximum design check ratio? You can select also or display the table design ratios by loading with the results for the different combinations. I think the best is, it's my opinion, the design ratio by joint. You can see the different joints and the different design check ratios. You can, for example, double click on such a line or you can uh, select that button here or press that button, design check details. Then a new dialog will be opened. So you can see all the equations from the standard and also where you can find it in the standard. For example, for the fasteners. Okay, we can also watch at the world. It's a plastic design of the world. Also for the plates, you can or we, we, we can uh, press that button uh, to see the results in the steel joints. You can also do that directly here, results in steel joint. So, and that's also a good button, consider specific component and you will see only the results what you click in the table. Here, for example, the ultimate limit state of the bolt or the bolt check, then the plate. Maybe I can move it a little bit. So for this one. So and you can also watch at the equivalent stresses. You can print that in the printout report or directly. So, bolts, bolt check, and play check, all is visible and can be printed in the printout report. Okay. Yeah. That should be all to the results. I turn back to my PowerPoint slides. I compared the three different uh, connections or the first three
connections. I compared the load capacity for tension axial force, um, yeah, the highest maximum force is for the yeah, connection with the stiffness, then for the connection without the stiffness, and yeah, the weakest connection is the hidden connection. And you can also see the actual stiffnesses for yeah, compression, where is an infinite uh, actual, actual stiffness. Yeah, that means that the stiffness of the connection is higher of the stiffness as the stiffness of the member. Okay. So, okay, that's all to this slide. Then we collected further information about the add-on steel connections. For example, the online manual. Yeah, let me click on it. It's the online manual. You can download the PowerPoint uh, at the end of the webinar. I will show you on the website where you can find it. So then that's the link to the LinkedIn profile of our chief developer, Andre Swark. You can find interesting posts here, for example, about the prying effect and the flange connection of circular hollow section. You can watch that video. He compared different connections with ring flange, then full end plate and stiffened, stiffened uh, ring flange. That's also a direct link of his profile. If you are registered for LinkedIn, yeah, just follow him and you can see interesting yeah, posts. So then you can find a lot of models to download on our website. You can see the different, yeah, uh, easy or easier connections or more or more complex connections. Yeah, check, just take a look at them. Okay. And the last link, yeah, you can see new features about the add-on steel joints. Yeah, that's the newest component, the cap plate. I showed it in the webinar. Plate cut or auxiliary solid and so on. And you can find more information where. Okay. Then if you want to get a free online product demonstration, for example, just contact our sales team with that link here, or you can scan that QR code. Now, or when you would like to get a non-binding offer for any of our add-ons or the program itself, just contact our sales team. So let me turn back to our website. Luba.com and under news and events, you can find the webinars. That's today's webinar, and that's the webinar of next week about masonry uh, structures. Then the week after next week, optimization. Then in three weeks, I and or Jürgen Teilmann and I will present this webinar or regularly webinar about the most frequently asked questions. Then uh, yeah, the Python API and so on and so on. Okay, that's today's webinar. In the next days, you will get an email with a direct link to that page. And then you will find the recording in the middle here. You can already find the presentation slides and you can also find the connections here. 
Uh, it's, I think it's the same file. We've got only different pictures, but when you download one model, there are all four connections included. Okay. That should be all from my side. I thank you for your attention. Thanks to my two colleagues for answering your questions. Yeah. I hope we meet each other in a future webinar. I wish all a nice rest of the day and bye bye.